Hey guys, in today's video we have got an epic 4S racing buggy to look at and it runs on this battery. No, of course not, it doesn't. It runs on this big boy. Stay tuned. <laughs> So guys, in today's video we've got all new Team Corelli Synchro 4 to look at. So if you're looking for a racing buggy which is quite big, it should be brushless, it should be 4S capable, very durable and pretty affordable, I think that this the one to get. So let me get everything out of the box so I can show you what's inside there. Inside the box you will find an awesome looking car, we've got a lanyard, we've got an antenna post, we've got a big pile of instructions and of course the transmitter. So let's have a closer look at the transmitter first. This is the transmitter and it runs on 4 AA's which you need to supply of your own. So it's capable of one end driving, the build quality feels very solid, uh, but the handle feels a bit too plastic in my opinion. So one thing what I'm noticing already is that the throw if you want to go forward is very short. Just look at this guys, I think if you're going to control the speed that can be a bit difficult with a short throw like this one. So in the reverse you even have got more throw, so yeah we have to find out when we are going to take it out for a spin. So on top of the transmitter we've got a couple of buttons this is your on off switch we've got the steering trim throttle trim uh, we've got the function button to set some different settings inside there we've got a switch to go 50% or we go 100% throttle and that's it so let's have a closer look at the car now and here is the car guys just look at it man this thing really looks amazing don't you think and the build quality this car feels so solid i am so impressed by this car and just look at all the components of this car the plastic on this is very very thick it feels very chunky and there is just no movement inside there and choose just, just look underneath this car guys we've got an all aluminium sessi underneath there we've got hex hardware throughout this car you know this thing feels very very solid so let's have a closer look at some details if you look at the front of the car, the first thing that you will notice are the very big chunky shocks. Just look at these guys, these feel very very nice. So the shocks are all made of plastic material or composite material, but that's all fine. Only the top piece is made of aluminium. So the shaft that goes inside there is 3.5 millimeters, which is all okay. But look at this shock tower guys, this is so solid, this feels very very nice. So no camber adjustment, no toe adjustment, and that's all fine, you know. If it has been set correctly from the factory, you don't need some adjustments and look at this guy so we've got a very big chunky drive shaft that goes in the front we've got some ball studs right over there and there is almost no in play inside there which is always a good thing and just look and listen to this guys yeah we've got all metal gears inside there which is always a good thing and we've got three differentials what's it what is three differentials well we've got a differential in the front and in the rear of course but we also have got a center one and that's the for distribution of the power to the front and to the rear of the car and yeah with a big performance car like this you know you really should have one of those when we look at the rear of the car the first thing that you will notice is the very big wing right over here and the wing is made from a very flexible material which is always a good thing so if you crash this car this normal Normally just flexes a little bit and doesn't break very easily and therefore I really like it. So when we have a look right over here you will find two very big chunky shocks and these are just the same as the front ones only a slightly bit longer so there is no adjustability right over here but like I mentioned when it's set correctly from the factory we you don't need any adjustability and that's all fine for me. So you have only some adjustment right over here if you want to increase the right height and is that yeah, same story in the front. So you can add the stabilization bar right over there. And the same story in the front if you would like to do so. So let's have a closer look at the tires. And the tires, they feel very, very nice. So they are very noppy and they are very stiff. And the stiffness is a very good thing. And let me tell you why. Well, for example, this big boy, you know, these tires are very, very flexible. And the downside is if you're driving at high speeds, these will balloon like crazy and you will lose grip. And yeah, therefore crashes. But when the tires are 
very stiff, you know, these don't balloon very much and therefore you will have more traction and that's always a good thing. So let me get the body off and show you what's under there. Underneath the body you will find all the magic. Just look at this guys, this really looks amazing, right? Well, I think it looks amazing. So this is your steering servo and this is a 25 kilogram steering servo. But on the box it is written that it's a 20 kilogram steering servo. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I prefer the 25 over the 20 of course. So we've got a very big servo saver sitting right over there, aluminium horn right over there, and this is the motor. So the motor, I'm not sure about the size, but it's 2150 kV and we've got some very big chunky gears underneath there i will show you that in a bit so we've got a 120 amp uh, esc sitting right over there with the on off switch and the on off switch is reachable even when the body is mounted and i really like that so we've got a fully adjustable battery tray right over there with an uh, xt90 connector and some straps to hold the battery in place so let me remove this little piece here you can see the main gear and the differential sitting right over there. So we've got a 5mm shaft coming for the motor and we've got a M1 pitch right over there. So this pinion gear has got 13 tooth and you can use a 13, a 15 or a 17 one. But unfortunately I bought a 21 so we can't speed run it on this one. But luckily I found a 15 one and so we are also going to speed run it on this one. So let me throw in a battery and show you when it's on. The car is powered on and let me first show you the steering servo. So we have got plenty of speed and we've got plenty of power as well. So this is a forest lipo battery. I put it at 100% throttle, so let's floor it. Whoa, that looks pretty fast. And just look at the tires guys, so the tires almost don't balloon. And that's always a good thing. So for now there's only one thing left to do and that's take it outside for a spin. So guys, we're outside and the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to speed run it. So I put in a forest lipo battery, this is the stock gearing, so here we go. So guys, I gave it a couple of runs and we hit the 66 kilometers an hour. So that's a pretty decent speed. So this is the stock gearing on a forest lipo battery. So let's change the, uh, the pinion gear into the 15 tooth one and let's see what the speed is then. So guys, the pinion gear has been changed and for that I needed to go home again because I needed a drill and a countersink tool to make it work, but more on that later in this video. Now it's time to speed run it again, but now with the 15 tooth uh, pinion gear on there. So let's go. <laughs> So guys, at the end of the long run, I crashed it and my GPS fell off. So here is the result. So we hit the 74 kilometers an hour. So that's pretty close to the 80 that they're claiming on the box. But when the, you look at the 80, there's a little dot behind there. So I think with the optional 17 tooth gear that you would hit the 80 for sure. But this car is pretty quick. And even on the high speed, you know, this thing really goes pretty straight. And yeah, I'm pretty impressed by it. But now let's take it off road. So guys, we're at the gravel and let's see what this car can do. So we're going to floor it straight away. Here we go. Whoa, this thing is really fast, man. Here it comes again. I tried to keep it in the, in the picture, but yeah, driving one-handedly with a car of this performance, you know, this speed is very tricky. So I put the camera on the stand. So sorry if it's out of picture, but it, I tried to do my best. This is a real whipper, man. And it drives so stable. I really like this. Ooh, big hard rock. Did you hear that? It just slammed into there. Yeah, this thing is amazing. Full throttle, here we go. Whoa, straw, that's a big crash. Let's recover that. So guys, do you see this? This is not only a racing car, this is also a mower. This is awesome. Let's clear this one and go to the higher grass. So guys, as you can see, you will need a little bit of space to drive this car around because this thing is really fast and it is very, very fun to drive. But you really need to have some space to drive, you know, otherwise you will crash into something and maybe you can break some stuff. I crashed already a couple of times, even I've got a pretty big space. So, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, this thing is really fun to drive. Even through the high grass, you know, not, no problems there, no cocking or something like that. This thing is just, yeah, perfectly balanced in my opinion. Here it comes, brakes, brakes. Yeah, brakes work fine, full throttle works fine. This thing is a real whipper. Yeah, so for now I will just give you some driving footage and then I will come back to you with my final thoughts. So guys, that was the drive room with the all new Synchro 4 made by Team Corelli. And what do I think of this car? Well, appearance wise, this thing looks awesome. I really, really like this car. Performance wise, I also like it. This car is so fast and so durable. I really, really like it. All the components which they have used, you know, the very tough plastic that they have chosen. The shocks are fine, the motor is fine, the ESC is fine. This package is just amazing in my opinion. And you would pay around 400 bucks, I think it is, for this car. And I think you will have a very, very good car for the money is it perfect well it's not perfect there are a couple of things what i wanted to talk about the first thing I want to mention is the pinion gear. In order to change the pinion gear, you have to drill out the holes of the 15 and the 72 holes right over there. So these holes are factory of 2.0 millimeters, but they need to be 2.5 in order to mount the screw. And when you have drilled those holes, you have to countersink them again. And that's very strange. And I totally don't understand why Team Corelli did it that way. Because you know, on the box is written that you can do 80 kilometers an hour. But in order to do so, you have to mount the 72 pinion gear, but you can't because you have to drill some holes and you have to countersink them again so that's a bit strange another thing what is a bit a bit uh, yeah a little bit strange is the steering servo so as you can see here this is the 25 kilogram steering servo but on the box is written that you will get a 20 kilogram servo of course that's not a downside but you know it's a bit strange that it, they misunderstand that another thing what i really don't like is the handle of the transmitter so the handle doesn't have got any pattern on there and therefore it feels a bit too plastic in my opinion and i don't like it. Another thing is the throttle stick, so you will have a very little throw on there. So if you want to fine tune it with the controls, you know, it's, it can be a bit difficult to do so. But that's just a small thing. And you know, you will get a lanyard with it, but the lanyard doesn't fit through the hole of the transmitter, so you can't use this one. And yeah, that's strange, of course. Um, so for a future video, I am planning to compare this car against this one so you will pay around 400 bucks i think it is for the team corelli one and for this one you will pay around let's say 250 but there's a very big difference in quality and i wanted to show you that but that's for a different video but overall this car is just amazing you know if you're on the tarmac and you just use full throttle straight away it just goes in a very straight line it is very stable as well it's very fast very durable you know this car i really like it Alright guys, that was it for today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.